John McNary, 55 L's Cole King, 35 L Charlotte Canes, 33 Pete Levi Mayer. Row number three, 74 F Barry Binker Jr., 17 A Jordan Harris, 11 G Gary Ketchum, 57 A Ryan Connolly, 36 B's Colby Carlisle, and the 11 F Curtis Vandekoy. A couple of those riders did not start their heat races, but they're still scheduled to have a starting pick in the last chance qualifier. This is the GNC2 class. It is six laps top four and that's it Chris get with the program here I'm telling you these guys uh, they all want to find themselves get them another 12 laps of education around the Ducoin mile top four will go to the final everybody else is done until we go to the Indy mile next weekend light turns green in a hurry it's Mac McGrew from the inside but it's gonna be the 14a Dalton Gotin he's got Wilhelm right there on the 24j a former Daytona short track winner now he slipped back to the third spot here comes the 23 that's Jeffrey Lowry now up to second yeah, Lowry having to come in the semi, qualified uh, in the top four in, uh, in, in practice and qualifying. Uh, drafts by, go, goes into the, into the lead, going off into turn three. Gautier uh, slots back into the second spot with 24, Wilhelm uh, running, uh, running third. Jeffrey Lowry, a former AMA Horizon Award winner, the Dirt Track Grand Championship start here on Monday. I believe Jared Meese is going to be the, representing the uh, pros, and he's going to be like Kind of like a, a father figure is going to help out some of these amateurs as well. Chris Carr, you'll be selling your products and sticking around to help these amateurs. Back out front is the 23 of Jeffrey Lowry. 14 A's Gautier in second. Third is Wilhelm. Roy Miller from the second row is already up to the four spot. And he's coming. He's looking for some more. He's got a lot of fast company behind him. Here they come down the back straight away. Right, it's great to see uh, Lowry, a Horizon Award winner. And I know uh, Gautier has been in the running the last couple years for that same award. Here they are, 1-2 in the semi, looking for uh, looking for a spot in the final. They're uh, set and sail at the moment, leaving a, leaving a four-rider battle for our final two positions into the main event. There is a huge four-rider battle back there for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and only the top four can keep on racing out of this one. Everybody else is done when they finish this race, unless you finish in the top four spot. So it's Lowry, Gautier in the two spot, Wilhelm third. Dalton Bell's up there now in the 22G. He's riding a Harley Davidson. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him on a, uh, he's on the Dorfler's Harley yeah. Davidson entry. Yeah, moving up into the fourth there, going into to turn three, the 23Z of James Monaco. He's on a on a motorcycle provided by Zanotti Racing as well. I believe this is a TL1000 Suzuki-based motorcycle. He's uh, looking to make his uh, first main event on the mile too as he uh, fights for the final position with halfway to go. Halfway flags are out. It's still Lowry, Gautier, one and two. A couple of really young riders, up and comers in our sport coming off of tournament two. Down the back straightaway. Wilhelm still in third. Good battle for fourth. Now it's the 23Z of Monaco. Roy Miller's back there battling with him, as well as Dalton Bell in the 22G. They'll take him down the back straightaway. Laps are winding down in a hurry. It's quick laps around the Magic Mile. This is the GNC2 class. They have the back black number plates with the white number, so it's a little bit different to see out there. That's why we can differentiate. Oh, that's a big word. I struggled with that one. <laughs> I stepped on my tongue, Chris. Yes, you did. Differentiate. The 24 trying to march forward. Brandon Wilhelm uh, inches toward the battle for the lead to see if he can pull anybody with him here with two laps remaining. Monaco fighting for position up the inside, coming off a of turn two, lights it up a little bit. Uh, these guys run in the back, they get two side by side coming off the corner. It kind of halts their forward momentum. Out front still Lowry and Gautier, one and two. They seem to be working together pretty good. They're not challenging each other for a pass order. Nobody's really catching these two riders. Back in the third spot is Wilhelm. Fourth and fifth is where the best battle is, is what's on the screen right now. The yellow bike, it's Dalton Bell, the 23Z is... Uh, as to, Bell uh -oh. comes up a little lame there as a white flag flies. That leaves James Monaco in the fourth and final position, uh, running by himself. We'll see if he's able to hold that on, for, hold on to that for the looked remaining like, lap. Looks like the chain was off that motorcycle, Chris. Uh, very possible. You know, this track has a few ruts in it here and there. It's a little bit inconsistent. You slide the thing up and it's you catch a rut. It could pop it off easily. Battle for second now as Lowry's pulled away. Here comes Wilhelm looking for second spot. Gautier has second, but he's wanting to hang on to it. Wilhelm's up there. Now the four spot by himself is James Monaco. That rider that's off the pace in turn number two was up there battling for a transfer spot. The chain came off. They could have possibly made a last second change to that motorcycle and not got the rear axle tight enough. But the checkered well, flag is out. We'll never know. But your winner is Jeffrey Lowry taking the win out there in our 
last chance qualifier for the GNC2 class. Wilhelm catches and passes Dalton Gauthier, uh, you victim of the last lap draft there, gets by. Do you think Gauthier was slowing down or do you think uh, Wilhelm was just picking up the pace? Well, I, I believe uh, Wilhelm's probably on a, a more of a GNC1 spec motorcycle. Some of these riders got caught off guard with a with a rule change, many of them not able to, to get their bikes converted to the full 750cc uh, displacement limit. I believe the bike that Gauthier on currently is a is a 650 so he's a little bit down on power maybe but it was good enough to put him in the feature. Jeffrey Lowry the former AMA Horizon Award winner at the Dirt Track Grand Championships takes the win Brandon Wilhelm will get second Dalton Gauthier third and the fourth transfer is James Monaco the 23Z that's how they finish the top four spots Roy Miller, Cole King, Mac McGrew, Sean McNary, Jordan Harris everybody else is done for the evening and that wraps, <laughs> that wraps up the uh, last chance qualifier, and we'll get things sorted out here in the booth. Me and Chris Carr getting all tangled up, but that's all right. In just a second, this winner is going to take off his skid lid and talk to Danny Medin. And this is a real quiet guy, but he can ride a motorcycle. Give him just a second to take off his skid lid, and we'll go trackside to our last chance qualifier winner. It is the 23F. That is Jeffrey Lowry and Danny Medin. Danny? Thanks, you guys. Jeffrey Lowry going on to the GNC2 main event. You have to be, be have to be feeling pretty happy right now. Yeah, I'm happy that we're getting things sorted out. This is kind of how Springfield went for us. So we're just trying to get something figured out here to be able to get out front. I got to thank everyone that's helped get me here. The Gray Hogs, all you guys out there, you guys are awesome. Tom Englehart for all the help that he's given me getting me here. Motion Pro. Doing this in memory of Eli, Woody Kyle Racing, NGK, UASA, Race Pro, just everyone that's helped get me here. Huge thanks to you guys. Nice work. You guys make some noise for Jeffrey Lowry. Scotty and Chris, back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Danny. Coming up, ladies and gentlemen, is usually one of the most exciting races of the evening. It's because it's six bikes, and it is only four laps. I'm talking about the GNC1 Dash for Cash. It is the Harley-Davidson GNC1 presented by... Vance and Hines. So the bikes are down there in the staging area. I'm going to go ahead and do the starting lineup before they come out. That way everybody can hear what's going on. On the pole, ladies and gentlemen, our fast heat race winner is the 59 of Willie McCoy from Keller, Texas. He's on the Harley Davidson of Wausau entry, Independence Harley Davidson. Starting second from Eatonville, Washington is the factory Harley Davidson of the number six, the Bullet Brad Baker. Starting third, the Zanotti Racing Harley Davidson from Crystal, Michigan is the 17 of Henry Wiles. Fourth starter on the SBR Straight Arrow Trucking KTM 990 from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, the 32 of Sean Bear. Fourth starter from Flint, Michigan, the Crosley Brands Kawasaki, the 42 of Brian Smith. And last rider on the front row, the Zanotti Racing uh, rider from Center Hill, Florida. That's the number two, Kenny Coolbeth Jr. Those are the riders scheduled for our Dash for Cash. Four laps to get. $1,000 to win, one point to win, and also something that they've changed up this year, the way you finish the Dash for Cash is how you get starting picks in today's 25-lap Grand National Main Event. That is very important. Interesting to see the 32 of Sean Bear not on the starting line. Uh, I'm not sure what the story is there, but it appears like they're going to go without him. But, you know, I see on this row of five riders here, four of them are full-time professional racers. That pole sitter Willie McCoy, on his on his day job is that as a sales rep for Western Power Sports. So we got a motorcycle sales rep on the pole. Light as turns green. Miles takes him into the first corner. Cool bet his teammate right there in second. There's Brian Smith in the third spot. They're going to turn number two. Off of turn number two. Here comes 17. Here comes the 42 around the two. So it's Wiles. Smith now in second. Cool bet in third. McCoy's in fourth. And the bullet, the factory Harley, back in fifth. Yeah, good power move down this front or rip back straight away there by 42. And uh, Kenny Coolbeth double drafts up the inside. See if he can make that pass stick by the time we exit turn four. But as they fight for the lead position, Brian Smith leading the Zanotti teammates, Coolbeth and Wiles, to the line. The draft pass comes in into turn number one. Wiles comes with them. So it's Coolbeth now. Wiles goes up the inside. They're going to push Smith all the way to the high side. Now Baker goes to the high side back there in the fourth spot. Willie McCoy sitting there riding in the fifth spot. He doesn't have much time to make something happen. It's only four laps to get a paycheck. Going to be interesting to see if the number six can uh, continue to run that really wide outside line. We know he's running it up in there deep, runs it up around the outside. I don't think he can quite make it, hold it wide open through three and four. Is that part of the track? It's dry, but he 
sure got a run around the outside of Cool Beth. Comes up alongside seven of Wiles and has to check up a little bit as they line up behind the 42. Here comes Willie McCoy, but it's Smith. Now here comes the Wiles goes up the inside. Baker goes to the high side. It's anybody's race. We got five riders on the track, and they're all in turn number two. Coming up to it's Wiles. Baker, Smith, one, two, and three. Wiles gets down and tucks in as low as he can off of turn number two down the back straightaway. The Crosley Kawasaki pulls out early. Here comes Willie McCoy. Willie McCoy up the inside, sneaks up in front of the 17, kind of slides in up back behind, gets a little wide, and Wiles comes back through. Man. A lot of give and take here in the middle of this pack with the white flag coming around. Chris, I got around. goosebumps. This one's awesome. Here's the white flag out. It's the 42 of Smith. Right now in second is Baker. Here comes Wiles, McCoy, and cool that You can throw a blanket over these top five riders, and that's all that's on the racetrack. It'll Smith, he'll lead him off a of tournament two. Now he ducks to the bottom of the racetrack. That leaves Baker up there by himself on the high line. He'll tuck in behind the 42. Two. It is Smith, Baker, Wiles, one, two, and three. Cool Beth and McCoy are side by side for fourth and fifth. Here comes Baker. Baker up the inside. First time underneath somebody going into turn three. Let's see if he can get through Whoa, the middle, get that thing turned. As Smith lines up behind, Baker gets little, it loose. Kind of sets himself up as a sitting duck down the straightaway. He moves to the inside. You're allowed one move off of the corner. Here they come to the finish line. Who's it going to be? We're going to have to find out when the timing and scoring catches up with the racers because we're going so fast out here. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the Dash for Cash, number six, the bullet, Brad Baker. He looks like he doesn't even know he won. Uh -huh. Baker taking the win. Smith will take second. Here comes a photo finish. A good look at the replay. Smith leads him off of four. He moves to the inside of the racetrack that leaves the outside wide open for Smith. Well, and that move to the left there kind of fills the 42's number plate full of air a little sooner than he expected. Didn't quite time that open, that, that, that the number plate full of air with the with the gap that opened in front of him. He didn't really get a full effect of a, of a draft move there. There he is. He knows he won now. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Baker, your winner. Brian Smith, second. Henry Wiles, third. Cool Beth, fourth. Willie McCoy, fifth. And Sean Bear elected not to start or... He might have not been keeping up with the program. The Dash for Cash, the same spot every time. He's not a rider that it typically makes the Dash for Cash, so uh, he'll get the last pick on the front row of tonight's 25-lap Grand National Main Event. After this one, ladies and gentlemen, we have two GNC1 semis, but we're going to go trackside with a very excited Dash for Cash winner. Just picked up $1,000, and as soon as he gets his skid live off, and one bonus point, absolutely uh, very important here in our championship hunt. This is the rider that was hot last weekend, and he takes a win here today. Takes him just a little while to get his skid lid off, and now let's go trackside with Danny Medine and the bullet. I love these Dash for Cash races. Do you guys? Brad Baker, you won the Dash for Cash last weekend. You won it again. But what I want to know is you guys are all over this racetrack. Is there a technique? What are you? What's going through your mind? Uh, there's definitely a little bit of technique. I mean, you need to get the power to the ground as much as you can. And uh, track's really nice right now. It's a little inconsistent. You know, there's places where it's really hooked up and places where it's slick. And that makes it to where you, you got to be kind of regulate how hard you go in certain areas. Uh, didn't get a very good start. I uh, wheelied off the line and then missed a shift and had to come from the back. And uh, had a little moment coming off of four there. I was really trying to get a good drive and got pretty sideways. But uh, the Harley Davidson XR 750 factory team with uh, Vance and Hines and my whole crew behind me. Uh, you know, we brought her home for the win, and I feel like we got a good shot in the main. And I think they're gonna put a little more water on it, and uh, I was able to keep the thing uh, wowed down in between three and four, where it's really slick. Uh, thanks to this guy over here, uh, mentoring me a little bit, and just put a little bit of a, another trick to my uh, to the, my bag of tricks I already have already. So uh, it's uh, it's a good feeling, and uh, try to keep the momentum rolling. Hey, they do call it the Magic Mile, so keep your bag of tricks going. You got a bonus point, you got a thousand bucks, and you're going to the main event. Make some noise. All right, congratulations to the Bullet taking the win. The Dash for Cash up next, our GNC1 semifinal number one. It will be eight laps the distance. Top three to the main event. Number 80, Stevie Bonzi. 23, Jeffrey Carver. 67, Colt Shabolts. 52, Shayna Texter. 96, Cody Johncox. Then 91, Mikey Martin rounds out your front row. Row number two, 87, Mick Kirkness. 27, Robbie Pearson. 51, Z, Sean Raggio. The seven of Sammy Halbert. 16, White McGuire. 72, of Chaz Landers. And row number three was scheduled be the 77 of Kyle Johnson. He is done for the night. They're getting him checked out right now at the local hospital. Uh, just got his bell rung a little bit, so they're getting him checked out. So uh, we wish Kyle Johnson well. Hopefully we'll see him next weekend at the Indy Mile. Chris, it is semifinal time. That means you're battling for the last three positions. So three of these riders keep racing. Everybody else is done for the night. 
Yeah, and it's uh, crunch time for the number seven, second and point. Sammy Halbert lining up uh, essentially in the middle of row two. Needs to get to the front, secure himself a spot in the final. This is something different. Stevie Bonzi is the first pole setter to pick the inside. He started on row number three on the inside, and it worked for him. We'll see what happens here at the start of this semifinal. Everybody else has picked the outside on the front row. Well, it is a little shorter run to the inside of turn one, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to get your momentum up. As Bonzi gets a good start, he gets to the corner first. Let's see if he can get that, keep that momentum rolling all the way around the corner and uh, come off of turn two as he uh, slots up in front of the 91 of uh, uh, Mikey Martin, drifts a little wide. Off he goes. And it worked for him. So Bonzi tries the inside and it works. 91, Mikey Martin had the outside. It works for him. Now Martin's going to lead him down the back straightaway. <laughs> and the seven Here. of Halbert from the Ooh. second row up in the up in the transfer position by the time we get to turn three. So uh, starting uh, 24 feet back had no effect on him. No, sir. Cody Johncox trying the inside back there. He's moving himself into the four spot. So this is a good battle off of four. Here they come. It's the 91 of Martin, the 80 of Bonzi, and the rest of the gang. Here they come to the start finish line. Good shot as they go across the finish line. Now it's leader into turn number one. It's the 91 Mikey Martin. There's the seven of Sammy Halbert and Bonzi right there in the third spot. Now Carver's showing a wheel on the 23 bike. Yeah, John Cox up the inside uh, in the in the fifth position, uh, battling for that with uh, the 16 of Wyatt McGuire, McGuire with, with Shana Texter close behind in seventh. We got seven riders looking for the last three spots here out of this one. Off a of turn at number two. Yeah, they turn around. Turn four. My bad. I was confused. Got turned around a little bit. Here comes Sammy Halbert bringing him off a of four. And we got the 91 of Martin there. Bonzi's there. John Cox and Carver. You got to finish the top four. No, top three, ladies and gentlemen. You're done for the night. So it's going to be a dog fight for the first three positions. It is Sammy Halbert, Mikey Martin, Stevie Bonzi in the third spot. John Cox gets pushed a little bit wide down here in one and two. And now the 23 of Carver comes up the inside. <laughs> Carver right. takes over the four spot. Now Mikey Martin side by side with the seven of Sammy Halbert. Martin on the inside, Sammy on the high side. Well, it appears the 80 of uh, Bonzi is able to get through the corners real good. It looks like he's on his motorcycle. He had been on uh, Nick Cummings earlier. This one here is more or less a half mile motorcycle. It's not really a mile bike. He's going to need to do everything he can to get pulled around by the riders in front of him. As soon as somebody gets in front of him, it makes it a little bit more difficult for him to get by. He's got to pass him in the corners. For our new fans that don't understand what the difference between a half mile bike and a mile bike, the mile bike's you know, about built 10 a little horsepower. bit different. Got more horsepower <laughs> for the long straightaways, correct? Yeah, they're certainly they're going to rev out more RPM. A uh, uh, half mile motor is going to be a little softer, a little bit more manageable, and it's going to be hard for Bonzi to get up in the back in the mix of this. Carver found a new line going into three takes over the number two spot so Jeffrey Carver's the man on the mission remember he came from deep in the field in Lima in the main event now he's coming up through the pack in this one Sammy Halbert has a little bit of breathing room back to Carver Mikey Martin in the third in the third spot now Martin goes into second here comes Bonds he's trying to stay in the draft we got John Cox looking at the inside on the 96 Harley Davidson yeah, Bonzi needs to do something to get up in, in the mix and get towed by a faster motorcycle. His bike does not appear to have the ability to pull out, draft, pull out and go by. He needed to slot in with the 23 there and get pulled up a little quicker as now the 96 of John Cox puts him under pressure. John Cox wants to go up the inside. He put himself he, in the mix for the last, last transfer he's spot. He's got to get there in a hurry. Sammy Howard out front. Now we got the, the 23 of Carver in second. Mikey Martin's in the third spot. Bonzi's in fourth. John Cox in the fifth position. I'm noticing a lot of tariffs are being used here today, Chris. Are you surprised at that on the mile? Not at all. With the loose conditions of this racetrack, uh, we don't really have rubber formed all the way around. This is a dirty racetrack today. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised at all. These guys are pop popping through the John tariffs. Cox has an excellent turn one and two and takes over the third spot down the back straight where they go. Now Mikey Martin takes a look at the inside on the 91. He's going to take John Cox's line away from it if he can. John Cox doesn't let that happen. He shuts the door out front at Sammy Halbert on the 723 of Carver. Third is John Cox. Now trying to make another main event this season. Bonzi's letting it all hang out on the 80, but like you said, he's on the half mile bike, doesn't have the horsepower down the straightaway. He's certainly giving it a run as we see the 52 of Shayna Texter starting to creep up on this group. She's got about uh, two, a little less than two laps to try and uh, the bridge that gap to the third place position, maybe get the final transfer spot. Sammy Halbert's got about 10 bike links back to the 23 of Carver. Here's a good battle for third. John Cox, Bonzi, and Mikey Martin. That's for the, Oh, Ooh, Bonzi, Bonzi goes yeah. in there and he gets into John Cox. They drift a little bit wide. Mikey Martin is right there just in case. And Shana texts her. This is, might be something she needs as a race to the white flag. It's a race to the white flag. Bonzi's uh, doing every everything he can to hold on to the third position. Comes up a little short. John Cox moves on by. He's going to have to be real aggressive. 
press it through the turns or figure out a way to draft the 96 down the back straightaway. Off of turn number two, it is Sammy Howard, Jeffrey Carver, John Cox. Great battle for third. It's John Cox right now has it. Bonzi wants it. 91. Mikey Martin also wants to get in there. This time, John Cox doesn't leave the door open for Bonzi to come in there and kind of bump him off the groove. John Cox shuts the door. Battle is for third. Sammy Howard leads him off for turn number four. Watch the battle for the third spot. Carver sitting, sitting pretty in second. Here they come. Drag race to the finish line. We'll see if Bonzi has anything left uh, under the he Pulls tank. out of the trap. See if he comes up. Oh, that's close at the line. Wow. I believe John Cox might have eked that one out. It's hard to say. Your semifinal winner is the 7 of Sammy Halbert on the BriggsAuto.com Kawasaki. And he takes the win. Jeffrey Carver on the Downs Kawasaki DPC Racing entry takes second by .177 seconds. And your third transfer is the 96 of Cody John Cox. The New York rider comes up there and makes the main event. And Bonzi did everything he could on the number 80 bike. Yeah, coming up just a little short. You know, he rode the wheels off that thing. We know, I, I know he struggled a little bit. We saw him pull off and practice uh, the first round out, having some issues. But uh, the number seven, Sammy Halbert. Uh, make short work of this semi coming from the second row. Not sure if that's the number one bike that was fixed or if that was the backup bike. But uh, I will say that race followed right after the dash. And the lap times of these guys are about a half a second a lap slower than the, the, the riders in the dash. So they got some more work to do if they want to find themselves racing for a win today. That beautiful Kawasaki pulls up to the victory podium. We saw him finish second last week at Lima. Or had an excellent run last week. He was on a different motorcycle, I believe. This week, he's on the Kawasaki. Let's go trackside with our semifinal winner and Danny. Thanks, you guys. Sam, you had an issue. I don't know if it was a mechanical or what exactly happened earlier in the heat. Can you kind of fill us in? Yeah, the bike just uh, quit accelerating, basically. Um, so we switched to a backup bike for the semi, and uh, and it's working good. I actually had pretty like a lot of fun out there. The track's pretty cool. Um, I raced here once back in 05, but uh, it's, it's nice to get back out here and uh, do it again. Uh, do you have some sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, big shout out to Briggs Auto, Scott Power Sports, Mike Scott for coming out, Martin Trucking, and uh, Johnny Goad, my whole team. Thanks so much. All right. Sam, you're going on to the main event. You guys, make some noise. Congratulations. Scotty and Chris, back to you guys. Thank you, Danny. We appreciate it. Good job down there on the podium. Our final qualifying race of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is our semifinal number two for the GNC2 class, and it will be the riders looking like this is the 98 Kel Kochman, Ventura, California, 94K Jake Cunningham, 73 Dougie Fresh, that's Doug Lawrence from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, 65 Corey Texter, 69G Danny Eslick, 23Y Ryan Foster, that is your front row. Row number two, the 50P Kurt Marmer, 28Ps Michael Bickerton, 21 Duke Eric. Erickson, the 10 of Johnny Lewis. See if he, remember, he had a mechanical issue in the first one. He's out there. And the 46, Aaron Linfords. The 90W also had a mechanical. I don't see him making the start. I believe he only has one motorcycle. And in row number three, he's scheduled to be the 74 of Scooter Vernon. He uh, was the rider that asked for two minutes in that heat race, but the bike did expire. So that uh, did get some Twitter Twitter questions from Chris Borjas, I believe. Asked what about the two minutes. Uh, if they ask re Ask about the two minutes in that heat race. They said Scooter Vernon's bike let go, so he did not get his two minutes. So uh, that's what I found out on the AMA Pro Radio, thanks to all the tweets coming in at CC4LLC, at Scotty Dubler, and we'll do get as many questions on FansChoice.tv as we can. Here we go. Last qualifying race of the evening. Watch for the green light. And they are off. Doug Lawrence from the very center of the racetrack. He'll try to lead him in there. Here comes Danny Eslick, the 69G. It's going to be Dougie Fresh on the count side. Kel Cookman on the outside. Kochman goes the long way around on his 98 machine. He's going to lead him off of turn number two. Eslick on the inside. Corey Texter right there on the 65 in the third spot. Down the back straight where they go. Yeah, they were about four wide. They're going through turns one and two as they got going. The 65 of Texter running up in the front of the pack here, trying to latch on to the 73 and the 98. We've got three Kawasaki's up front and the JL10 on the Ducati. Back and forth, trying to run that freight train of Cowies down. Remember, Johnny had a DNF in his heat race. Looks like he's running strong right now. He's in the four spot. Top three will go to directly to the main event. Tonight's main is 25 lap. Yeah, as uh, Kolkman leads them through, turns one and two. See kind of a high groove developing late in the turn. Texter slotting in behind. We know uh, Corey, uh, Corey will tell you he's on a, a 650, running against these bikes that are most likely 700s or 740s. 
and uh, he's doing everything he can to hold on to, the, to their draft as he comes under pressure from the 10 on the Ducati, J.L. Lewis. He's going to have to keep those three right in front of him. Here he comes down the front straightaway. Looks like he's going to make a draft pass. He thought about for a second. Colkman and Dougie Fresh going side by side into turn one. Corey tries a new line going into turn number one, goes to the bottom side, loses a little bit of ground. So right now it's Colkman out front, Dougie Fresh in second, Ctex in the third spot, JL 10 in fourth. Only three of these riders go to the main event. Doug Lawrence taking a look over his shoulder, wants to see who's there. Yeah, Lawrence uh, wants to see who he's got to play with, who's who may come by him in the draft as he swaps position again with the 98 of Colkman as Johnny Lewis takes the Ducati, moves it up the inside into the third spot. Let's see if he has anything for these leaders. Doug Lawrence leads him off of four. Dougie Fresh on the 73. 98, Kel Colkman, Ventura, California rider in second. And Corey Texter on the 65, trying to get past Johnny Lewis on the number 10 Ducati as they go through one. Now they're in turn number two. Looks like Doug Lawrence has settled into the lead. Kel Colkman's right there. He's settled in second. Johnny Lewis looks like he's still the man on the move. He's trying some different lines. Now he's tucked in the drafting C. He's a lot bigger than some of these other guys as we had him in the pre-show. Colkman takes a look up the inside. Lewis uh, got sucked into the draft there. Had the uh, turn right and avoid the rear of the 98 going into turn three but gets it squared up trying to get a good drive up the inside off at of turn four but he's not really in position to, to pull on pull on the leader halfway flags are in the air of our last qualifying race of the evening it is Fresh out front, Johnny Lewis comes up there, takes the two spot away from Kale Cookman. Now Corey Texter back and forth. So the top three go on. One of these riders isn't going to make it to the main event. Doug Lawrence pulls way to the inside off of tournament two, trying to break the draft. Didn't work. Here comes Johnny Lewis up the inside looking for the lead. Yeah, this is the best uh, Doug Lawrence has looked on this Kawasaki. I know he's been a long time Harley rider. Uh, hasn't had much luck on the Cowie so far this year. Uh, looking real good. Strong, uh, strong run here in the semis. JL10 up front, Johnny Lewis. Leads him, leads him by just with three to go. Johnny Lewis once again on the outside. Doug Lawrence looks at the inside and says, well, I'll, I'll try to follow Johnny Lewis and see where he's faster than me. And it looks like he's pulling away right there in the very center of the corner maybe. And now they're going to take him off the two down the back shoots. Johnny Lewis, Doug Lawrence takes a look over his shoulder and wants to see how many people he has to beat. It's Lewis. Here comes Doug Lawrence up the inside. No, he chooses to back. You can see him back off a little bit. He wants to follow Johnny. And then third is Kale Kochman. Fourth is Corey Texter. Well, we know the straight line speed of the Ducati is pretty stout, so sometimes it's best to let that let that faster motorcycle, if that's what you perceive, to pull you up to the to the finish line as he comes up a little short. But it, the momentum, even though he, he didn't beat him to the line, it was Carried. able to slingshot by and the momentum put him up in the lead. Carried him into the lead, into the corner. So Doug Lawrence is going to lead him off at two. Johnny Lewis in second. There is the 98. Kale Kochman still in the third spot. So we got Kawasaki. Ducati Kawasaki and Corey Texter also on Kawasaki. From there on back, it's Foster, Danny Eslick, Michael Bickerton, Jake Cunningham rounds out your top eight riders. Coming to the white flag this time by it's JL10 out front. JL10, Johnny Lewis getting a good run off a of turn, creates a little bit of separation. See if he can break the draft, see if the 73 and the 98 can work together and run him back down. But Johnny Lewis starting to look comfortable. Uh, running lap times in the high 36s, low 37s, but he's created some separation here through one and two on the last lap. We had him in the pre-show. Chris, he said the track was coming around to him every time he got out there. Now there's a lot more rubber down. That's uh, I think that's helping that Ducati get the horsepower hooked up to the dirt here at the Magic Mile. Johnny Lewis leads him into the last corner. White flag is out. Last corner, here they come. Johnny Lewis on the 10, Doug Lawrence on the 73, 98 of Colkman. If they can keep the point in the right direction, they'll be our transfers. Here they come to the checkered flag. Johnny Lewis takes a look down. Doug Lawrence on the 73. He's not going to try to make the pass, and Kel Colkman will take the third spot. Corey Texter and everybody else will be done for the evening as here comes the rest of the riders across the start finish line in our last chance qualifier, which is a GNC2 semi. So after this interview, ladies and gentlemen, this will be our second and final intermission break. Good time to pick up yourself that souvenir t-shirt. It's on sale out front. It's got a good picture of the man sitting behind me, beside me. That's Chris Carr, who won here back in 2005, 10 years ago. So that's it for qualifying. Johnny Lewis, JL10 on the factory Ducati team. He takes the win here in our last qualifying race of the evening. Again, up next will be our final intermission followed by our GNC2 main event and then a short break and then our GNC1 main event. So two races left, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner is head on the front straightaway down the victory podium. It is Johnny Lewis, who we talked to earlier in the pre-show right here at the DeCoin Magic Mile, picking up the victory. He's building up some momentum and he's headed to the victory podium and 
Danny Medine's going to talk to him here in just a second. I'm sure that feels good. good, uh, you good know, looking uh, scrambler. Looking scrambler. I'm sure that feels good uh, having some issues early on, be able to come through the semi and, uh, and win in dominating fashion. Yeah, he started at the back, and something happened to him in the heat race. Let's go trackside with Danny Medine. He's caught up with our semi winner. Danny? Johnny Lewis, you're pushing that Ducati from the back of the pack up to the front. Take us through that race. Yeah, we uh, unfortunately had a uh, something go wrong with the back cylinder of the other bike, so we jumped on the other girl and uh, took her from the back row and with pretty much no practice on it. And, and uh, you know, I only got two laps in the heat race too, so I was basically learning a brand new track because the track's completely better. You know, it's a lot better from practice qualifying. So, uh, you know, hats off to the team. We uh, the bikes are different, so we switched out a couple of different things and uh, got a good working motorcycle for the main event. Now, there's been a lot of lead changes in every single heat race that we've seen. What does it take to keep that lead out here? Yeah, it, you know, for me, it's going to be working up through the pack, um, you know, and just getting to those groups, be able to work the draft and get to the next group. You know, hopefully nobody breaks away. I don't think they will too much. Um, you know, I was able to get a pretty good start from the second row. I'm in the third row. But we made it work pretty good at uh, Lima last weekend. So I'll uh, just see what we can do here. Now you have a great team behind you. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, the whole uh, Lloyd Brothers Ducati. Uh, it's a scrambler themed motorcycle, so it's, it's got the whole scrambler theme. And uh, you know the bikes are selling great. So it's uh, you know if you ever ch haven't seen the bike yet, it's got the same color scheme, but it's uh, it's a street version. So it's it's a neat motorcycle, and uh, you know the whole everybody else that supports the team. It's been great. Well, nice work out there, Johnny. And you guys, the best races of the night are coming up soon. So don't move. Hey, you were great. <laughs> All right, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen, with all of our qualifying, all the main events, the two main events have been set up. So we're going to take a short break. It's a good time to stretch your legs, grab yourself something to eat, something to drink. Don't forget to stop by the official souvenir trailer that's located out front. It's the big red trailer. Pick up your official DuCoin Mile T-shirt. Also stop by and see Vance and Hines. There's several other booths out there. Also, the class of 79 and friends should be drawing for their 50-50 ticket here soon. Last time I heard, the winning ticket, or the, the amount was $1,231. That means your winner is going to get over $600 dollars here tonight so we'll take a short break take care of some things here in the booth and we'll be back with our gnc2 main event in about 10 minutes yeah 10 training it's a motorcycle riding camp um, what i put together this week was a three-day riding school um, for kids and ended up being about 9 to 17 years old in kind of preparation for the uh, the 2015 uh, amateur Grand National Championships, which is held July 6th to the 10th in Dupont, Illinois. There's a big range there, so it's, you know, if you were taking a nine-year-old in classroom and a 17 in classroom, it, it's totally different subjects. But motorcycle riding, it brings everybody together. It's a very social gathering, kind of unique type of uh, training. The approach we're taking to this is to kind of prepare the kids for the amateur nationals and then down the road. You know, it's riding tips, which then progress, you know, on the track, but also the mental training that really allows the kids to focus on, you know, pre-thoughts before even getting on the track to once they're out on the track, putting it all together, because it's, you know, it's long four days. It's, it's a lot of pressure, and it's kind of allowing these kids to learn how to take that pressure off. For me, Doing 10 training and offering three-day boot camps like this, not just the riding aspect, but providing the mental training, the physical, the, you know, the nutritional, is very important to me. I, I feel like it's something that has helped me in my riding career. I've learned, I have great people that I learned from from over the years in all different disciplines. And uh, you know, for me to be able to pass the information along and see their success, um, you know, whether it is just making a main event or the success of them actually just grasping one thing of like maybe just using the rear brake or just getting throttle control a little better. Just them being seeing the excitement is what empowers me to just continue to do this. And that's why I love to do it and I'm gonna to continue to do it, you know, I feel for many years and hopefully help, you know, hundreds of kids and then even adults, you know, in the future just kinda, of, you know, embracing themselves, riding motorcycles, having fun.